Hi, my name is Pete Swinney and welcome to another MoTeC webinar. Today's subject is how to do fuel tuning on a Nissan R35 M1 ECU. The topics we're going to talk about today is the R35 engine sensor layout, the, the way you'd normally do M1 fuel tuning, and why the R35 is so important to get the fuel tuning correct and we cover this a simplified method of doing this to uh, to get good results all around okay so we see in front of us now this is the layout from probably the Nissan manual and shows the basic sensors that we've got to work with on the R35 we have uh, mass flow sensors here on both left and right banks well the critical sensors anyway are the mass airflow got two boost pressure sensors here, one in each bank, and they're prior to, well just after the intercooler and prior to the throttle bodies. The two throttle bodies here, number eight. And the thing to note the most of is there is a single map sensor in one of the banks only. So number 12 is a manifold pressure sensor. All right, so that's a single map sensor. Now the plenums, despite what you see in the drawing here, do have an interconnecting balance tube but it's quite small. So the key thing we're going to talk about today is the fact that we don't can't necessarily measure accurately the um, manifold pressure in both plenums. Alright, when you get the R35 kit from MoTeC you also get a uh, part of the kit comes an inlet manifold air temp sensor. So that fits into one of the plenums and measures as by its description the air temperature, inlet manifold air temperature. Alright and you also get lambda sensors to go in there as well to replace the less accurate factory ones and they fit in just ahead of the catalytic converters. Alright so the basic fuel tuning model for the M1 is quite a lot different to the M800. So I want to go through this step by step so people have a clear understanding of how to do it. It's quite different and for the whole system to work well you really need to follow this uh, process um, quite accurately. So uh, because the M1 system is very accurate with knowing the amount of air and fuel going into this, to the system if we do things like change injectors, change fuels, um, change throttle bodies and things like that we can enter in new calibrations into the setup and it doesn't affect the tune-up itself so we can do major changes to the hardware of the engine and not have to require a full retune of the of the engine itself. Alright so to begin and to, to have the information to be able to do this accurately in the M1 the first thing we want to do is have our mixture aim which is our old-fashioned lambda table from the uh, M800 days. So what I'm going to do is flick to the uh, M1 tune software so you can see what the table looks like. So here's uh, the R35 start file that we've currently got on the internet and so we've got uh, up here different worksheets for different tables that uh, are critical to tuning the R35. So over here and under worksheet number three is the fuel table. So this is the fuel aim all right, actually just by pressing G we can toggle the different views. So here we can see this is just like the as I said the lambda table on the M800 and we can enter our aim lambda for the engine that we're running. So for example at one bar of boost or 14 psi or 100 kPa gauge boost at 6000 revs we've got a current aim lambda of 0.84 so what you should do before you even start tuning this is make this aim lambda what you want it to be. So if you want to run that richer or leaner than that, now's the time to do that. The key thing to understand, and again that's different from the M800 M4 series ECUs, is that the actual calculation that calculates the injector pulse width at the end of all of the internal calculations it uses the fuel aim table. So if we for, for instance were coming into this R35 that someone had, had tuned and all we do is change this lambda aim number the actual mixture would change. So if you made this 
0.84 to 0.80 I would expect whatever the mixture was running previously at 6,000 and 200 kPa it would then change by 0 0.04 lambda it would get richer all right so the idea is to enter the correct numbers here for what you want to achieve all right so back to the presentation fuel density reference so this is something you wouldn't often change so while you're running petrol the fuel density reference is 760 kilograms per meter cubed too complicated for me but let's go and have a look at it if you do want to change actual fuels all right so we any obscure or less common values like this the easiest way to find them is to to go across to the all calibrate and type in fuel dense and there you go so this gives us our temperature coefficient if that's known and the fuel density reference for that fuel so if you change fuels go to methanol diesel well you're not going to run diesel but methanol e85 something like that you would need to change that that number to here to do that all right so back to the powerpoint then the storage stoichiometric ratio so for gasoline petrol it's 14.7 so if we change to methanol it's going to be something like 6.5 E85 it's something like 9 can't remember exactly again let's go and see where that is so go over to the all calibrate page again click in the search box storage STO and you can see we're searching through it and there it is fuel stoichiometric ratio 14.7 we can change that to 9 whatever I'm not going to leave that there obviously 14.7 enter okay accurate injector linearization cows this is something that you are definitely going to be changing and, and messing around with now there's a webinar that tells you how to bring in uh, different injector calibrations to suit different injectors so we'll just see where that where these live in the M1 software so back we go again just type in INJ LIN and here they are so here's the linearization tables so this is for injector number one at 8 volts 10 volts 12 volts 14 volts okay so when we go to change these uh, change injectors put a thousand cc injectors for instance in this R35 we wouldn't want to go through and manually enter all these numbers so what we actually do is we add or add another compare file and using the merge function which you can't see at the moment because there's no uh, um, no compare file up you use migrate data and you pull the new calibrations into here but as I say there's already a webinar on how to do that and if you're interested you can view that okay all right so that's inje accurate injector cows engine displacement so we need to know how big this engine is it uses it to calculate the amount of air that the engine will consume at a given efficiency all right so the displacement for the R35 in factory form is 3.8 liters give or take all right and fuel pressure obviously the more fuel pressure we run the more fuel will flow across the injector for a given uh, pressure and the other thing that we want to change and we can enter into the software and that's whether the fuel pressure regulator is referenced ambient so in other words it hasn't got a boost reference hose on it or it's referenced to the inlet manifold pressure so we can get to that setting fuel pressure all right now there's a lot under fuel pressure if it's got a fuel pressure sensor then the sensor will measure the correct fuel pressure so you don't need to enter in a number if it hasn't got a fuel pressure sensor fitted then you need to enter in the default fuel pressure so we just type in DEF we get to default all right so in this case the fuel pressure sensor default the pressure that we're running and if we don't have a sensor then the fuel pressure sensor default is used in this case it's 52 psi all right and then we'd like to know if we've perhaps put a boost reference hose on this so fuel pressure reference all right fuel pressure regulator reference we can select inlet manifold pressure or ambient so this is where we change that so all that stuff's entered and if any time you change any of those things physically you need to come into the software and change them electronically if you like all right so if we have that set up in our M1 
and we actually enter just a number of 100 in the efficiency table, then the engine will actually start. The engine will go, uh, if you were to start at say 80 at low loads and go to 114 or 116 up in the middle, it would actually probably drive not too bad at all. Now obviously we want to do a little bit better than that. So the way that you would tune, a, as I say, a normal M1 uh, setup is you would then tune the efficiency map to match the current fuel mixture aim settings. So we'll just go back. So in this case we have, for example, our 0.84 lambda at 6,200 kPa. So that's 200 kPa absolute, which is 100 kPa of boost. So we'd simply get rid of that want to change the efficiency map here to make sure that either on a dyno or through logging that we change that map to make sure that we hit that aim point. Now as long as when you run this engine that at each point here, so in this case let's go to our 200 kPa and was it 5000 revs? Okay let's just uh, go back to our fuel aim so at 6,000 revs, I apologise. So at 6,000 revs, so we're running this uh, on the dyno at 6,000 revs at 200 kPa, and our current, currently the lambda sensors are reading 0.80. Now just the same as an M800, we can actually tune this either live by pressing Q or offline by pressing L for lambda was. So we press L for lambda was. It looks up the aim table. The aim table is 0.84. We can enter in what the lambda was, which uh, in our example is 0.80. Okay, and we press enter, and the efficiency table has changed. If we have a look, you'll see that a big hunk is missing out of it over here in the map. Number's gone from around 112, it probably was, or 111, it's down to 106. So that's 106% efficient. So what that means is we're saying that if four litres, almost four litres of air is going into the engine, so in fact, 106, it's slightly more than 4 litres, sorry, 3.8 litres, which is the engine's capacity, is flowing in per cycle. So for every cycle the engine's um, rotating through, 106, the cylinders are currently filling at 106% of the capacity of the engine. All right, so the idea is to get the efficiency map shaped so that it matches the fuel aim. And then this is actually the true efficiency of the engine. This, this will show where the engine is more and less efficient. Okay, it's something to note. I'll just pop this back now to a more realistic number. Okay. All right, so in this case here, if you look at, look at this particular map that we've got for the R35, I can actually push G to have the whole map and F6 to show it full screen. Now, traditionally, an M800 map wouldn't roll over. Once you got to, um, say, a bar of boost, you would expect the same fuel number to be there as the boost went on and up. And with an M800, the fuel map's actually influenced by fuel pressure and it's influenced by fuel aim. So in an M800 map, if you asked for a richer or you tuned for a richer mixture, well, the numbers would go up. But in, in an M1 map, that's not the case. If you want richer, then your fuel aim table gives you more fuel. If you add fuel pressure or subtract fuel pressure, that's all accounted for in the fuel pressure setting. So what you see here in the efficiency map, as it's aptly named, is the true airflow efficiency of the engine. Now, as you'd expect, as boost pressure goes up, the exhaust back pressure also goes up so the ability for the engine to flow air through is decreased because the higher the boost the more exhaust back pressure is built so in normal terms as you go up in pressure as we're increasing up we see the numbers rolling over so the boost pressure going up is to the right here because I've twisted the map okay so up the, this axis here is our boost pressure and this axis is our RPM or our engine speed. Alright so you can see large humps here where there's virtually no exhaust back pressure and there's perhaps a little bit of cam overlap causing a higher efficiency rate. Alright so it's unusual how it all works out but this is the true engine efficiency shape for the current setup that we've got. 
So it stands to reason if you change the turbocharger and make it bigger, then it'll have less back pressure at say this point here, which is where the red dot is, if you can see that. All right, so that red dot is at 6,000 revs and 220 kPa. All right, so if you change the exhaust uh, or change the turbos and the exhaust back pressure changes, then then the efficiency would come up. So you would expect the efficiency numbers to grow here with a turbo change. So if you change the engine's efficiency mechanically in any way, you need to retune the engine efficiency table. If you don't change the engine's efficiency mechanically, change injectors, change throttle bodies, change uh, fuel pressure, that kind of thing, that doesn't change the engine's ability to flow the air, so there's no need for an, uh, an engine efficiency map change. So if you have this GTR running very well and it's tuned perfectly, and if one day you decide to say, instead of short course racing it around uh, small circuits, you want to do a long distance Paris to Dakar or something like that, and you wanted to make it richer, you don't change the efficiency map, you actually go here and change your fuel aim. So we go from a perfectly tuned 0.84 at 6,000 and we want to make it richer, we simply do add that number. Now if we go out and test again, it'll be running 0.80 at that same point. Alright, so that's the basic way we, we do our fuel tuning in an M1. CDUs are done that way and um, any simple turbocharged or supercharged style map is going to be, or M1 package is going to be like that. The R35 is a little bit different. So the R35 requires that we have a torque based system. So from factory there's multiple electronic devices on board that request certain amounts of torque for them to operate properly. So the gearbox computer for instance requires torque reduction for gear change also requires torque reduction to prevent its axle snapping and things like that. The traction control system requires a certain amount of known torque reduction and the stability control is the same. So flowing into the M1 ECU via the CAN bus are torque requests from the onboard computers. So for us to supply the correct torque back you know, through the engine itself, we need to know, or the, the ECU needs to be able to model torque as accurately as possible. So that means we've got to, 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 to try and do that quite precisely and it's, uh, it means that we have to calibrate things right and keep the calibrations accurate if, if there's hardware changes. So the M1 ECU mapping is designed to mimic basically the factory system and all real modern vehicles today or modern engines are a torque based system. But until now with our earlier ECUs and current technology ECUs they haven't been able to do this efficiently, efficiently enough to work well. So we really want to deliver an accurately tuned engine efficiency table which means the ECU can deliver any requested amount of torque. Now how the ECU delivers the correct amount of torque is it closes the throttle or adjusts the boost pressure or alters the amount of ignition retard. So it, it does a combination of all of those and once we actually accurately map the engine the, the onboard calculations know exactly how much torque the engine's making at all times. Now a key part of the calculation for the generated torque comes from the efficiency table being tuned accurately. So to give you an example if you were to do this really wrong, you could put a different set of injectors in the engine and you could actually make the lambda correct just by changing the efficiency all right, so if you didn't change the injector calibrations properly in the settings and you put in, let's say, injectors that were twice the size and you had, say, an existing efficiency number of 110 and you put in twice the injector, well, you would just halve the number, uh, the efficiency number. But by halving the efficiency number, say, down to uh, 55, be because the efficiency table is used directly as part of the torque calculation, the torque calculation would be out by probably 50% and that would be a disaster for running the car properly. So we need to map the system, the R35 system, in a very accurate way to try and maintain the accurate torque calculations at all times. This, this isn't easy. <laughs> Alright, so 
the efficiency table isn't the be all and end all of the of the torque calculation but basically it's a key part of determining that mass of air going through the engine and if we know the mass of the air going through we can calculate reasonably accurately the torque going through all right, so now there's actually three methods of mapping the, the efficiency table or the vertical axis of the efficiency table. There's three methods um, of, of mapping the engine. Now, we're, in this webinar, we're covering uh, the simple and safe method, if you like. Now, this method will give you a good tuning result. And if you follow some of the guidelines through the webinar, it'll, it'll also give you a good torque result. What it doesn't give you is an overall perfect tuning result with regard to nice consistent lambdas down the bottom and, the, and I'll tell you why that is in a minute. So we've got kind of three main methods. So method one means we use the manifold absolute pressure sensor just like the good old days from the uh, measured from the factory sensor. So that's the map sensor that's in one plenum. Now the problem with this is that it is only in one plenum. Now at mid to high boost levels that's not an issue. The, the pressure difference between the plenums is very small and any small variation is actually percentage wise quite small in the big picture. So if you've got a 2 or 3 or a 4 kPa difference between the manifolds at 1 bar a boost or 200 kPa or 300 kPa percentage wise that's tiny. But down at lower uh, manifold vacuums down at 30 kPa 2 and 3 kPa errors is like a 10% difference. So using one, one pressure sensor to accurately measure the amount of air in each plenum is difficult to get perfect at idle and those low flows. So while it's a good safe method for tuning because you're measuring accurate pressure, it's not ideal for everywhere. But moving on, so the, the method of determining the air mass through the engine uses in method one the manifold absolute pressure sensor as measured from the sensor the efficiency table assuming you've tuned it correctly the air temperature to measure the density from the air temperature sensor that we f you'll fit in the kit and it uses the engine displacement as well so as I said it's a simple and safe method and it will allow you to tune accurately the the measured manifold pressure at one bar is going to be a bar of boost give or take a little bit and you're going to know how much ignition to have for a bar of boost and it's going to give you a good result tuning wise all right uh, it doesn't rely as much on throttle mass flow and injector calibrations being correct we always want those things to be correct but if they're not perfect you'll get the result you want by tuning the efficiency table to to get the lambda where you want it you get the the result for racing which is what's important now but actually the uh, one of the best ways to to calculate the the torque from the engine is to model it using a modeled manifold absolute pressure sensor well not sorry not sensor model absolute pressure there's lots of uh, similar names here all right so we can model the amount of pressure going into the inlet manifold or the model the actual inlet manifold pressure by using the two onboard boost pressure sensors and the position of the throttle. So if I just skip forward to our next, uh, I can give you a diagram of this. So here's a diagram of the, actually just going back quickly, the, here's a diagram of the simple or the safe method. All right, so You'll see here we're going to use uh, sensor number 12, which is our inlet manifold pressure sensor, but it's only in one, one plenum. So it's going to, as I said, it's going to give you a reasonably good result. And the factory calibrations for factory throttle bodies and everything else is going to give you a good result for the modeled manifold pressure as well and give you good result for torque calculations. Um, it's only when you ch start changing calibrations and don't get that right that you'll get into trouble. So as a good starting point to keep it simple, you can use this method. All right, so the next one we spoke about was using the, the second method, which is modeled manifold absolute pressure, which is calculated from measuring boost pressure in each plenum. Now, in the R35, the, there is a boost pressure sensor in each plenum, so we know the exact pressure in each of the uh, runners after the intercooler, 
and if we model and we have in this case model the airflow through the throttle bodies for any given pressure we then know exactly how much air is flowing into the inlet manifold so for a given boost pressure and a given throttle position we can actually calculate the amount of air going into or the mass of flow going into the inlet manifold if we know how much capacity the engine has got and the engine speed and we know the uh, the efficiency table number so if it's a hundred percent so for a hundred percent efficiency table number the engine is pulling in four liters of air per cycle and so if we know how much air is flowing through the butterfly or through the throttle for a given boost pressure and a given throttle position so if we can calculate this five liters of air coming in we know that there's pressure in the manifold so the actual manifold pressure can be calculated so this is surprisingly accurate given accurate calibrations so the modeled manifold pressure channel is there for you to check and and look at and what it actually means is it gets very very accurately the the individual pressures in each plenum and what it also means is that you can actually we can actually almost before it happens predict what pressure is going to be available here for the engine so because it's based on throttle position and pressure it's 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 a smoother and more accurate way of mapping the available air going through the engine so long term it's actually quite a good way of mapping the engine but it heavily relies on accurate flow characteristics for the throttle bodies and um, boost pressure sensor calibrations etc and and it, and with all M1 models it relies on injector linearization uh, calibrations being accurate as well so that's our second method if we go back our third method is the air mass meter so on the um, R35 you have an air mass meter the air box air mass meter uh, one on each bank so that very very accurately measures the amount of air going into the plenum and so forth and into the engine so if we know the engine displacement how much the engine air uh, engine is consuming uh, via displacement and we know how much the air mass meter is using uh, is flowing we can work out actually a manifold pressure reading as a result of that as well so all of them are useful the air mass meter in particular gives us very accurate flows at, at lower at lower end flows so for idle and so forth so uh, it's a useful way of mapping it for that that time so if we just go to the uh, flow chart for that or the diagram for that so here we can see the method three is mass airflow which is it's a slightly more advanced method of doing it right so mass airflow sensors are here and because we're measuring every gram per second through the mass airflow it's all connected there's no extra air comes in and it goes through so we know exactly how much air is going into that plenum via that mass flow sensor and how much air is going into this plenum via this mass flow sensor okay so methods one and two rely on accurately an accurate efficiency map for tuning so the wrong shape table means an incorrect torque calculation let me just go back again so the torque is calculated and the main torque calculation and certainly the main torque reduction calculated calculation is based on the modeled manifold pressure into the plenum so if the model manifold pressure is what's used through the efficiency map to calculate how much torque the engine is using and how much torque will need to be removed to meet the specification from say the stability control system so it's important that this calculated or modeled manifold absolute pressure channel is accurate in order to calculate accurate torque going back again so it's critical because the efficiency map is part of the, the the calculation of torque that the efficiency map is accurate so the wrong shape efficiency table means the the wrong torque is calculated so and of course this will if, if it's an, a, a long way out the torque calculation this will affect the gear change the stability and traction control performance now all of these three methods that we've just covered the air mass meter the modeled manifold absolute pressure and the measured manifold absolute pressure 
can be used in an advanced single file using a Kelman gain calibration process. Now this is the ideal method of mapping and it gives you the best results for an overall tune. But this webinar is going to cover just the setup of using basic manifold absolute pressure sensor tuning that I believe a lot of you will be using. All right, there's going to be a future webinar that will go into how to set up the Kelman gain process and so forth. There's, a, there's no power disadvantage to using just the map sensor as you normally use it. The advantage you get from using all three methods together in an advanced file is really good all round running and long term that's where we need to head. But this webinar covers the simple or the safe, safe system to get you going. Right, so method one's the one we're going to go with. So, and that is the what the start file currently on Motec website is set up to do. The calibration or the calculation for the fueling is solely derived from manifold absolute pressure, as per measured by the sensor. All right, so just to recap on that, the actual torque reduction calculation comes from the or is derived from the modelled manifold absolute pressure channel. So now that channel is not critical while you're tuning it using our method one, but it is ideal to have this channel the same as manifold absolute pressure. And if you grab a stock R35, load our start file to it, and you log measured manifold absolute pressure and modelled manifold absolute pressure, you'll see the lines almost meet. They're, they're very, very similar. The problem that will occur is if some of you decide to put on bigger throttle bodies without an accurate throttle body calibration or modelled throttle body calibration, the manifold absolute pressure calculated or modelled will then be an error and your torque calculation will be wrong. So this doesn't mean this won't affect how you tune the engine, but it will affect, as I say, the torque calculation. So the process to do to go through and get this right using method one is to tune the engine first. So tune it the way you we dis, we discussed at the beginning of the webinar. Set your fuel aim table accurately. Then tune the efficiency map using the the manifold absolute pressure sensor, the standard setup file that we've got. So tune the efficiency map the way you would do any other uh, any other tune up. Just make sure that the efficiency map or the result of your logging matches your fuel aim. Once that's done, you can then look and at at the modelled manifold absolute pressure and see if it's close to the true manifold pressure. Right now, if it's not, then something's wrong in the calibration. So if you've got different throttle bodies an incorrect boost pressure sensor calibration, a throttle servo position high calibration that's not not being calibrated right, the low end is self calibrated, or the air temperature sensor calibration is wrong, then the modelled manifold absolute pressure will not match the actual. Right, so if you everything is standard for the standard file that we've put there, then it'll be the same and your torque calculation will be accurate. Alright, so the only time you're going to run into trouble here is when you start changing throttle bodies, uh, particularly throttle bodies will affect that calculation the worst. If you put different boost pressure sensors in and don't calibrate them right, well expect a bad result. If you change your throttle bodies and don't calibrate the high position accurately, then you're going to run into problems. So the key thing to learn and understand is you can tune it with a normal manifold pressure sensor but keep an eye on the modelled manifold pressure sensor because knowing that the modelled manifold pressure sensor is what is calculating the torque. And also in the back of your mind, please understand that the efficiency table is one of the largest uh, effects that the torque, calib uh, the torque calculation uses. So if you've got a badly tuned efficiency table, then it all goes badly wrong. All right, so it's critical then before you change components that you change the the appropriate tables um, as required. Okay, <laughs> not easy is it? So 
Modifications, again, just reiterating this, the R35 allows you, the fuel model allows you to change these components and the calibrations are all there to allow you to do it. And we want you to do this, we want you to put big throttle bodies on and big turbos and make big power. Just please understand when you do, you need to make sure the calibrations are correct. So as the system models actual quantities of air and fuel, when a component is changed, the model only needs to know how or how the air or fuel quantities are affected. So as long as you, you enter the appropriate calibrations in, everything will keep working. And again, it's critical that when you change those components, you change the calibrations. So what I thought I'd do is list a, um, some common things that you guys will be changing. So the first one's the fuel injectors. Now we've already covered where that is uh, earlier in the webinar. So uh, and there's a separate webinar on how to exactly pull in different injector linearization tables and you've seen where to go. If you change turbos, then that changes the efficiency table. So I'll just quickly go across to the M1 software again and we'll quickly cover that. So the turbocharger will change how the engine breathes. Yes, it'll make some more boost, but it'll change more than anything the exhaust back pressure, which changed the amount of air flowing through. So if this were our standard uh, efficiency map and we put on a different size turbocharger and nothing else, we're not putting any different fuel in, we're not changing throttle bodies or anything, then the only real thing you will have to change is the efficiency map. So what you will expect to see is areas uh, at higher boost levels will need up here so at this intersection point or at this load site here 6,000 revs you're going to be putting bigger turbos and probably running more boost so this is a manifold absolute pressure of 240 kPa which is 140 kPa gauge of boost so that efficiency number there of 107 because the exhaust back pressure is not so high there then that's probably going to need to go up so you could even predict before you fit the turbochargers what the kind of um, differences are going to be. So you would certainly add some numbers to the sites, you know, uh, on the higher side of the boost. So you could just page up some efficiency numbers there. I mean, I've crudely done it. All right, so you run safe to start with. Okay. So Waste gates will probably not affect that much other than your boost control setup, but this webinar doesn't cover boost control. Throttle body, that's a major. So before you rush out and buy a set of throttle bodies, and if you want to keep this thing uh, calibrated correctly and working well, then you should consider whether Motec has a calibration available for those throttle bodies. Maybe do a little bit of research and see um, if we've got that done. If we've got that done there will be a file with it and you'll be able to pull the calibrations in. So if you've got throttle bodies that are different you need to go to two, there's two areas the throttle area table and throttle mass flow area factor. So let's pop across to them. Now if you've changed these throttle bodies and nothing else and you find that your modeled manifold absolute pressure channel is now wrong and this is the only thing you've changed and it was right before then technically you could actually do your own calibration and your mass flow sensor will give you your uh, airbox mass flow sensor will actually give you ma true mass flows and you can uh, change your throttle bodies whoops change your throttle body calibrations to suit your mass flow airs, air calibration so let's pop back to the M1 tune and go to the all calibrate and type in throttle just so we get this right throttle body throttle area table throttle area table I've typed something wrong throttle area there it is oh it's not table that was my problem throttle area all right, so here, this little symbol here indicates it's a table. So here is the table. We press G, G, and G. Just toggle around. All right, so here's the table for the factory GTR throttle bodies. All right, so if you find that your calculated or modeled mass, modeled manifold absolute pressure is wrong and all you've changed is your throttle body, 
you can potentially change the shape of this curve to fix it and you can actually do that by trial and error and get a good result and the other factor that changes is the mass flow area factor so this is kind of like a scaling factor so if you were to put on a throttle body that has twice the area you would start by adding by doubling this number here and so if you put on a throttle body that has got 20% more area then add this add 20% to this number and then manipulate these numbers they're a percentage of this number by flow all right so that's the throttle area all right and your mass flow sensors if you want to change the calibration for them of course there's one for each bank as is, as there are with throttle bodies uh, so we can show you where to go so that's airbox mass flow bank one and two so again in the all calibrate area air box mass airbox mass flow let me see why we didn't get that airbox one word airbox mass flow bank one you've got the calibration here all right so if you happen to put bigger airflow meters on it you're going to need to change that calibration as well all right and boost and manifold absolute pressure sensors boost pressure bank one and two So boost, pressure, so here it is, boost, pressure, bank one, sensor, calibration, and there's your default as well. So if the sensor goes into error, you need to think about a sensible default for it. All right, it's a simple, lin uh, fully linear calibration for that sensor. And your manifold absolute pressure sensor as well, and press inlet manifold pressure bank one sensor all right if you choose to add a second second bank sensor which you can your calibration is there as well okay and you'll see the bank one sensor the resource is not in use the bank two sensor the resource is analog volt input nine all right so that's it it's a long one. It's a complicated subject. I hope you uh, understood uh, some of it. You can obviously re-watch it and uh, ask questions on our forum and also watch other webinars. All right, so if you haven't watched the introduction to M1 Tune Part 1 and 2, I would highly recommend that. How to download the logging and how to send log files over the internet. So good luck with the R35 project. It's an exciting car. And there'll be another webinar coming soon online to give you a full detail how, of how to set up the complex Kalman Gain multi-sensor uh, input for tuning. Thanks for your attention. Catch you next time.